What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another FPL video. In this one, it's my Game Week 10 team selection. So I'm going to take you through how the team is looking, thoughts around transfers, captaincy, all that good stuff. We'll have a quick look at Game Week 9 as well. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like. Do hit that subscribe button as well if you haven't already. We are less than 25,000 subscribers away from 350k, which I would love to hit before the end of the season. It's completely free to do. So if you've been watching the content and enjoying it, you haven't quite hit the button, make sure to go and do it now. Thank you very much right let's take a look at game week nine i did wild card so if you haven't already seen it this is the team that i went for i ended up going quite cheap on the bench just to have some money in reserve just in case i needed it and obviously we'll talk about mitrovic when we go through the game week 10 team but if he's injured straight away i'm going to be happy that i've got that money in the bank so i went for gay nico williams andreas and everson now it might be the case that i probably should uh, that maybe i should have spent that money i could have had trippier on the bench instead of gay for example he's now gone up in price again by 0.1 million so i can't afford to do that move there's obviously other ways to get him in but that could have been an option i could have also gone for a brighton defender on the bench because in game week 12 they got nottingham forest at home but i kind of gambled that I would lose a few points in game week 12 and gain them elsewhere by having that extra money in reserve. So that's why I made that decision. I also went for the double Leicester goalkeepers. Now with 1.1 million in the bank, I could have gone for Jose Sarr or Fabianski instead. But again, I was trying to think long term. Yes, they might look better now. But I think in the end, I'm going to need that money. And it's better just to have less money in the goalkeeper position. I could have gone for a 4.5. There just wasn't too many that stood out to me with much better fixtures than what Leicester have. And I know maybe it's a little bit lucky to get a clean sheet against Nottingham Forest, but I would also argue Leicester have been a little bit unlucky for the sheer amount of goals that they've conceded so far. So very happy that he got the clean sheet, Danny Ward. An eight-pointer as well, one save point, one bonus. And look, if he doesn't get another clean sheet for the next three games, I'm not going to be quite as bothered because at least he's got one. So that's why I kind of made those decisions. Now, to be fair... Those decisions were made to save that money to afford to have Salah alongside Haaland to also have Trent Cancelo and Reese James when in reality it would have been probably better for me to go Trippier. So I've made some compromises to have some more expensive players. Time will tell if that was a good call but right now it's not looking great. Trent Alexander-Arnold coming in with a zero pointer against Brighton not good at all and between the three of them Trent Cancelo and James they got three points you know averaging one each. Trippier beat them all. So that looks to be a mistake right now. We'll see over the next few weeks how that ends up panning out but I got 70 points so it wasn't great I fell from like 600k or whatever I was to just outside the the top million now that did look even worse before Leicester played I was actually outside the top 2 million Madison got his 18 pointer Ward got 8 points some people will say you were bailed out by them but if they would played first I would never have been outside the top million uh, 2 million at any point anyway uh, but it is annoying that I've dropped but I'm still trying to not put context around it, but just try and view it positively. I mean, it's not good being outside the top million when I was like, you know, top 600, top 500k at one point. Um, but I'm only 41 points off the top 100k. That's not that much at this stage of the season. And ultimately, it wasn't as much as people are looking at this wildcard thinking it's awful. And look, maybe it's not going to be great. It wasn't necessarily the decisions I made on wildcard solely. It was the captaincy decision. Had I gone for Haaland over Salah, I would have been on a, a green arrow, albeit a very small one. But I wouldn't be in this position I am now. So really, it's the captaincy I need to think about going forward. I need to start nailing that and I need to kind of pick and choose when I'm going to go against Haaland I think that's going to be few and far between moving forward as we'll see for game week 10 it's definitely going to be on him I think for what it's worth Man City scored six goals right I expected them to score against Man United I wasn't quite sure I thought it'd be the massacre that actually happened so that was pretty crazy for Haaland to go and get five returns I feel like it's fair enough everyone thought that Haaland was the better captain before the game week I'm not sure they thought he was that much of a better captain like an 18 point swing and Liverpool went and scored three goals and Salah only had one return I don't know how often that will happen going forward where it's just an assist like they could easily score three goals again and he could be involved with every single one so I feel a little bit unfortunate that it was that much of a swing but I'm not going to sit here and say that Salah was outrightly the best captain because he wasn't. It was very close and in a lot of people's minds, Harlem was outrightly the best option. So fair enough if you went for him. But that was literally not the only thing, right? Of course, I could have had Foden instead of Zaha whatever. But if I captain Harlem, I would have been on a green arrow. So it kind of puts things into perspective a little bit. And when I kind of realised that, 
it kind of made me a little bit less panicky about the team that I've picked. Obviously, there's some issues there. Mitrovic might be injured. Mitrovic only got a... Two, uh, sorry, Solanke only got a two-pointer. They could have had a penalty, by the way, Bournemouth. He sticks that away. Suddenly, we're laughing. So, I don't think I made too many incorrect decisions. I made some compromises to get some Liverpool players that maybe I don't need right now. But I do think from game week 12 onwards, I'll be happy to have them. So that's how it is right now. 70 points, not great when people are smashing kind of 80, 90, 100 points. But it is what it is. I've already lost those points now. We just have to have to see how many we can get going forward. So going into game week 10, I've got one free transfer. As I mentioned, I've got quite a bit of money in the bank, 1.1 million. So as we go through, I'll talk about where I could spend that. In terms of goalkeepers, obviously, I'm happy with them right now. They've just got a clean sheet against Nottingham Forest. What I really want to happen this week is either Solanke blanks and Bournemouth just don't score. And they've not exactly been kind of free-flowing when it comes to creating chances and scoring goals. And therefore, Ward gets the clean sheet. Or Ward loses his clean sheet, gets a few saves along the way, and it's Solanke that scores. The reality is it'll probably be Billing or someone else from uh, Bournemouth that puts the ball in the net. But that's what I'm hoping that happens. The The absolute dream would be Solanke to miss a penalty, saved by Ward, and then he scores the uh, follow-up and gets another goal later on. That would be the dream, but I don't think it's going to happen. But ultimately, like I've already said, I've made that decision to have extra money to spend in my outfield players. Whether or not that will be a good move will remain to be seen. But that's why I've done it. And right now, I know people don't necessarily have Trent, they don't necessarily have Salah, in which case they've got quite a bit of money to spend. I'm just hoping that at some point that flexibility will work out better for me than it will for other people that have spent more money in that goalkeeper position, right? So we'll have to wait and see. Time will tell. I'm not looking to make a goalkeeper transfer necessarily, but Leicester in game weeks 13 and 14, they've got Wolves away and then Man City at home. If I have the luxury of a free transfer, I may make a switch for the last couple of game weeks before we get to the World Cup. But obviously, me i'm probably just going to hold them all the way through in terms of defense obviously cancelo and james have got um nice fixtures this week i mean i'm a little not completely annoyed about the cancelo decision but i did say man united would score and therefore it might be better to go with trippier instead because this is basically cancelo's best week of the of kind of a four game week span so they concede against man united i expect them to concede against liverpool and they've then they've got a blank so he needs big points this week to kind of warrant keeping him in my side. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. His attacking numbers are not that great this year. Obviously, he plays in a brilliant defence, and he's pretty much nailed on, which is why we like him. But we are paying a premium where we want to see those attacking returns, and it hasn't quite happened yet. So I'm definitely keeping this week for Southampton at home, of course. Why would I get rid of him? But I think for game week 11 and against Liverpool away, I might look to see if I can go for a more... Uh, like attacking, like a, a more aggressive transfer. If I've got two free transfers and nothing else to do, then I might look to bring in someone with a better fixture, like possibly Perisic against Everton at home. And then in game week 12, possibly look to get Trippier in and then decide what to do after that, whether or not I bring Cancelo in or try and go for a cheaper City defender. But right now he stays. Same with Reese James. Obviously, he's someone that I've kind of earmarked to keep all the way up until game week 16. Hopefully, Potter will have them playing defensively solid. And I think Wolves at home is a good fixture. They're going to have a new manager you would assume if they've got someone in the door by then so we'll have to see if it's a different Wolves team will they be more attacking but I'm pretty confident of James returns this week Trent Alexander-Arnold is the issue I think look they got a clean sheet against Rangers in the Champions League he scored a free kick that's not going to happen every game I'm not expecting Liverpool to get clean sheets against Arsenal away or Man City at home I think in previous seasons we'd be absolutely more than happy to play Trent in this fixture but right now maybe not so much and if I had gone for Trippier on wildcard instead of Gay, I'd even consider playing him and benching Trent this week. But the reality is, I've got Nico Williams on the bench. I just do not trust, even against Villa at home, I don't completely trust Nottingham Forest to get a clean sheet. Although, to be fair, if you look at the expected goals conceded, they didn't do that badly against Leicester, right? Leicester, obviously, you know, four goals, great. They played well. Um, but the expected goals conceded weren't that bad for Forrest. And then you've got Gay against Leeds. But I just think Leeds are always that team that can score. So I don't know if I want to play either of those ahead of Trent. So I'm probably just going to go for him. But I'm not really expecting too much. I think, if anything, maybe an assist, maybe a goal. I'm certainly not expecting a clean sheet, especially away from home. So that's the defence. I think... It doesn't look great from last week getting three points and it maybe doesn't look great because I've still got a Leicester goalkeeper in goal and Trent against Arsenal away. But Cancelo and James can definitely come up with the goods and if Trent can chip in with an attack and return, things might not be looking so bad as we go into game week 11. 
So let's talk about the midfield and we'll start off with Martelli. I'm pretty happy about my decision to hold on to him on the wild card. Arsenal have already faced a pretty tough test with Spurs and come away with three goals. And who's to say they can't get another one, two, maybe even three goals against Liverpool. And it's not just necessarily about Liverpool defending badly right now. It's how good Arsenal are in attack. And he did get an assist against Spurs, although he only came with a four-pointer. So I think that's pretty encouraging against Liverpool at home. And then Leeds away is a good fixture that I can easily cover him in the blank. So pretty happy with that decision and I think Arsenal will probably look to kind of attack that le their left hand side Liverpool's right side where Trent is and it's not necessary I don't buy into this fact that Liverpool is this awful defender right he's just not got any ability when it comes to defense but as Klopp spoke about recently he is instructed to get forward so there is often space on that side especially if the midfield aren't covering well enough which at times this season they haven't done so I think that bodes well for Marseille that less uh, the Arsenal sorry not Leicester why am I talking about Leicester Arsenal will kind of attack down that left side and hopefully he will come away with some returns because I'm not expecting a clean sheet from Trent whatsoever this week. Looking at the rest, I think with Zaha, I wasn't expecting anything against Chelsea anyway, so it doesn't really matter to me that he blanked. I just wanted him on wildcard, ready for this week so that I didn't have to spend a transfer on it. And he has got pretty good fixtures all the way from now until game week 16. And I'm not really worried about him. What I will say is, though... And this isn't logical when it comes to making FPL decisions or anything like that. He does feel like one of those players that is always getting points in other people's teams. But as soon as you buy him, he just doesn't do anything for you. And that is already playing on my mind. And again, wasn't expecting anything against Chelsea. But if he blanks over the next couple of games, I will maybe start getting cold feet on him. Especially when I've got that 1.1 million in the bank just burning a hole in my pocket. But I think when you look at the, the fixtures, I think the beauty of Zaha is... There's never going to be a rush to sell him between now and game week 16 because the fixture every week is just pretty good. It may be not amazing, right? Obviously, West Ham away is not necessarily easy. Everton away might not be either, but there's never going to be a rush to sell him. So if I've got other fires to put out, then I can do those transfers instead. And if I've got the luxury at some point of removing Zaha, then I could definitely do that. Like I look at that team with Zaha and Madison in there, that could be Foden and Saka at some point before game week 16. So I'm not completely attached to either of them, but I do think Crystal Palace's fixtures are so good that I can just hold on to him if I need to. With Madison, again, no intention to sell him. He just got an 18-pointer. Now he's got Bournemouth. So, of course, he's going nowhere. Um, I think for anyone looking to buy him, this is the time to do it, if you haven't already. Because from game week 13 to 16, and this is why I talked about a possible goalkeeper transfer, they've got three away games. They're not necessarily easy ones either. Wolves away, Everton away, West Ham away, and then Man City at home. Now, Leicester do tend to find a way to score. Madison is usually involved. So I wouldn't be going out of my way Way to sell him for these fixtures but i will say that i've already got a plan in 13 or 14 to sell him for foden or saka that's kind of what i'm looking at already with one of my transfers after kind of the blank so i think he's a good option now but the later you leave it to buy him the worse an option he's gonna become to to bring in so if you want him and you've got a spare transfer and there's someone that's not looking good this week this is probably the week to kind of look at buying him but at some point both zaha and madison could could go but for now there's no rush to do that Let's talk about Salah, right? I know I talked about him yesterday. I don't want to repeat myself too much, but more people watch this video than any other one that I do. So I'm going to go through a little bit of it again. There's a big difference between buying him and selling him. So I'm not sitting here telling any of you to buy Salah. Don't do it. You don't need to. You're going to captain Haaland anyway. The, the, the earliest time I can see people possibly wanting Salah is game week 12. So for the next two weeks, forget about him. You don't need to buy him. It's different for me though. I already own him. So then the question is, is should I sell him now a lot of people will say he's not worth the money you're not captaining him and stuff like that I completely agree but I disagree with the idea that I should go to Kevin De Bruyne just because he scored more points so far there's only a point four million difference between these two players now I got Salah for 12.8 when I got him back on wildcard De Bruyne has gone up to 12.4 if you are someone that's had De Bruyne for most of the season you're ahead on points you got him a little bit cheaper fair enough again I am not telling you to buy Salah but for me I don't think it's worth saving point four million now it is an interesting dilemma because I don't have a transfer plan this week unless Mitrovic is injured we'll talk about that in a minute I also don't really have a good transfer to make in game week 11 either unless I'm going to do Cancelo to Perisic then Perisic to Trippier but that just feels like something that could go heavily wrong you know using two transfers in a row on defenders so it is possible that I could do Salah to De Bruyne then buy Salah back and then just roll a transfer until after 
the uh, the blank game week. But I'm just not sure I want to risk any other injuries cropping up. We've just seen what's happened to Mitrovic. Players are playing a lot of minutes right now. There's fixture congestion for those in Europe. There's a midweek fixture for Premier League teams in game week 12 as well. So I don't really want to do that. And if I'm completely honest, as much as Southampton at home is a really good fixture... I'm not sure De Bruyne is going to heavily outscore Salah this week. And then in game week 11, I think Salah's got the better fixture, right? Being at home to Man City for Salah, I think, is better than being De Bruyne away to Liverpool, no matter what you think about how Liverpool have defended so far. And again, it's not me sitting here saying De Bruyne is going to blank in those two game weeks, because he's almost certainly not. I just don't think it's worth a transfer to do that move and I think after this week there's every chance that from kind of game weeks 11 to 14 that Salah outscores De Bruyne I think people get just way too caught up on what's happened you're right I made a mistake by having Salah I should have had De Bruyne instead I should have captained Haaland in all those three weeks that he got hat-tricks where I never captained him but I cannot get those points back I am only making the decision from this week and I'm going to back myself that Salah from this week until kind of game week 14, maybe even up until the World Cup, is going to be a better option than De Bruyne. I might be wrong about that, but I'm prepared to kind of face the music when everyone's in the comments section telling me otherwise. I, and I think that's, that is a really important thing to just remember for any of the decisions you're making. You cannot get points back that have already happened. You can only make decisions from now on. So Trent, for example... There's not really been many points and it doesn't necessarily look like there's going to be many going forward. Maybe that is a mistake and maybe that is one that I need to re rectify down the line where maybe I've got that transfer that I want to use. But with Salah, I just don't get the idea of selling him to De Bruyne. And some people will say, go to Diaz, he's better value for money, but they'll still have De Bruyne in your team. So you're not saving four and a half, five million by doing Salah to Diaz if you also have De Bruyne. You're saving 0 0.4 to maybe 0 0.6, 0 0.7 million. So that is why I'm not going to make the move. And, and ultimately, yeah, I'm not going to captain Salah. I'm not going to captain De Bruyne either. So it doesn't really matter. So that's why I'm going to hold on to. I think I've made that decision. It might be wrong, but it's not worth using a transfer on straight away. Not in my opinion, anyway. So you'll be happy to know that I am captaining Erling Haaland against Southampton at home. That captain's armband will not be moving unless he gets injured, in which case I'll probably just lump it on Salah and hope for the best. But right now it is on Haaland. That's not going to change. Interestingly, this is going to be only the third time that I've captained him all season. And I do feel a little bit unlucky if i'm honest right yes okay it was shoot look if we look at the if we look at the results look i get it i said at the time i'm not going to captain him against forest because of minutes but if he hauls i'm just going to look stupid and i did and look a lot of people didn't necessarily captain against palace so i've missed some big hauls right palace and nottingham forest hat tricks the hat trick and two assists against man united but for someone to have 17 returns in the first eight games and I've captained him twice and the ones I've done it in a Bournemouth for home where he gets one assist and then Wolves away where they were down to 10 men and he only gets one goal no bonus points in either game that feels a little bit unlucky like he's basically apart from the Newcastle game got nine points or more in every other one and the only two I've captained him in a Bournemouth for home where Foden didn't even square the ball so maybe a little bit unfortunate if also a little bit stupid not to captain him more often I'm sure that will change going forward now you look at the fixtures captain this week he probably will be my captain in game week 11 i'm not 100 percent set on that but he probably will be salah in 12 and then game weeks 13 and 14 are interesting because salah's got forest and leeds and i think in seasons gone past we wouldn't even look elsewhere for the armband but the way harlan's playing i'm not sure i can go against salah but game week 11 will be interesting but definitely captain in this week and can i say well i'm on a little bit of a rant about being unlucky and i'm not sitting here saying that i've made all the correct decisions because i definitely haven't i should have captained harlan more but i have now captained harlan and Salah against Bournemouth at home, and I've got one assist between them. Liverpool and Man City in those two games scored 13 goals, and I've got one assist from Haaland because Salah blanked. Absolutely crazy when that stuff like that happens. But that's what I'm talking about about earlier, about trying to keep making good decisions, that the points have gone now. I can only keep trying to make good decisions going forward. And obviously, your opinion might differ on mine on what is a good or a bad decision. But I think when stuff like that happens, you just got to roll with it and then just go again the week after. So, look, I've missed a lot of points from Haaland. Hopefully, he gets some this week. It's not going to matter because everyone's going to captain him anyway, but that's where I'm going. Just on the other two, no real plans to sell Solanke at the moment. He's so cheap, there's not really anywhere else that I could go anyway. I know he's not going to get me a huge amount of points, but if he can chip in with a goal here or there, I'd be perfectly happy with that. Good fixture as well against Leicester at home. At some point, he might get a penalty. That could help me out. So, no plans to get rid of him. Mitrovic is the interesting one. So, he is flagged. We still don't know at the 
the time of recording how long he may or may not be out for. If he's fit for this week, I'm probably going to, well, I'm definitely going to hold him, right? Because he's got Bournemouth at home in game week 11. If he's only missing for one week, I'm probably going to hold on to him because he's got Bournemouth at home in game week 11. Uh, yeah, game week 11. And I'll probably just play Nico Williams or Gay instead and just roll the transfer. I could upgrade one of those defenders to someone else, but I don't think I will do it. I, I think it's just that fixture run afterwards for Mitrovic that makes me want to hold on to him. Bournemouth at home, another home game against Villa. Then it's Leeds away, pretty good fixture. Then another home game against Everton. I think possibly 15 or 16 I might look to get rid I don't really want to get rid of him unless I absolutely have to. If he's out for a few weeks, then it gets interesting. I've got 1.1 million, so I'm not stuck with trying to find money to upgrade him. So then it's Tony and Wilson, and I think there's a good chance that I would just go for Wilson as a 1.1% ownership differential. So that's kind of my plans. Everything else is just staying as it is. I want this team to have another week just to kind of assess it afterwards, see how it's going, hopefully have two free transfers going into game week 11. And if there's nothing else to do that week... Then I do have the option of doing Salah to Son and captain in, or just doing Cancelo down to Perisic and then Perisic to Trippier in 12 to give me slightly better options in those weeks. But as it stands this week, I just want to roll. If Mitrovic is in for one week, I will probably just play my bench. But Callum Wilson is calling to me. I think he scored three goals in the four games that he's played. Newcastle are creating a lot of chances. They are fourth for XG so far this season. And I know they've got two away games in the next four, May United away and Spurs away. But I think if they keep attacking as they have done, there could still be goals in those games. And Callum Wilson's on penalties as well. It's just those injury concerns that kind of worry me. I think there the other the only other option I just want to talk about is if Mitrovic is out for weeks, I still have the option to not sell him this week. I know he'd probably go down in price, so that would be a little bit annoying. But I could hold on to him for now. I could play Nico Williams, and then in game week 11, I could use two free transfers to maybe shift those funds into midfield, possibly look at someone like Trossard, or move it into defence, keep Trent, Cancelo, and James, and get Trippier in instead. As long as I can cover the blank in game week 12, that's an option as well. So I, I'm not going to panic on Mitrovic if he is out. I, I, I try and decide what to do, and I'll talk about that in the final thoughts video. But ultimately, I probably want to roll a transfer if I can this week. So there we go, that is my team selection for game week 10. If you've enjoyed that video, make sure to give it a like, hit that subscribe button if you're new around here as well. And also let me know down in the comments below what move you think I should be making this week. I think for me, I'm happy just to back my decisions. There's a few things on that wild card I'm not 100% sure about. Salah long term, possibly Trent Alexander-Arnold as well. But I don't think it's worth panicking and using a transfer on straight away. I think there could be big value in rolling this week. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Otherwise, I will leave it there. I'll catch you again for tomorrow for another video give this one a like hit subscribe and i'll see you then mm -hmm.